Good evening and welcome to Refuge Church. I'm David. I'm one of the pastors here at Refuge. It is so good to be worshiping with you guys tonight. We're going to be continuing our series on Acts and we'll be wrapping up the Acts BC series tonight. We've been looking at how the early church, the early Christ followers actually, began building the church that preached Christ crucified and resurrected. We've been looking at how Peter and John and the others have been given the power of the Holy Spirit to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus to begin his church. We're going to pick up where we left off two weeks ago, but before we do that, I want us to look at some things for a moment. I want to take a trip down memory lane and look at different fads and different trends, if you will, that have come and that have gone over the years. Let's look at the first one. Is it up there? There it is. Now, you had to go to Hardee's to get these things. And my grandmother dressed her five grandkids up in trash bags and make us perform the California Raisins song outside of Hardee's one time. So there's that. Mm -hmm. The next one is even better. Now, my mother was a manager of a waterbed store, so we had a waterbed in every house, in every room of the house, per se. It's wonder we didn't drown. The next one, Guitar Hero. Everybody can become an expert guitar player if you play the Nintendo or PlayStation or whatever it came on back then. How about the next one? I think some of us have actually done this before. That's called planking. <laughs> now, you would see people planking on the sidewalk, just laying face down on chairs. Uh, everywhere you would go in the gym, you would see it. And then they came up with something past planking, and it was called owling. If you've never heard of owling or you've never seen people owl, it's this. They act like owl, owls, like they're perched on a thing, and they look down at people. That's called owling. It took the place of planking. Of course, that didn't last long either. How about the next one? No judgment. If you have any power beads, if you have them, that's fine. But back then, people thought that you wore these beads and that those beads ha has energy and it matches your energy and the aura of the beads can make you fulfill the rest of the year day and wear a cape and you can fly home. So there's that. How about the next one? Now, this is... This is not a cell phone. We all have that. I'm talking about custom ringtones. You had a custom ringtone for everybody in your life. Now, I still have one custom ringtone. Of course, who has their phone on ring ever? But mine's the Carolina Tarrell's fight song, but it never is on. All right, the next one. This is back in the 80s. Hypercolor shirts. Now, these uh, shirts, they turn colors whenever you would sweat or you would go out in a different uh, atmosphere. And they were probably filled with like radioactive dye that seeped into our bloodstream that we still have in our bodies today. How about this one? These are pretty new. This is called a fidget spinner. Um, these are educators, either best friend or worst nightmare. So there's that. And how about this one? Blonde tips for guys. I mean, Nicole, you have, you've, you're just so kind to put your favorite pastor up there. I wish she was in here. You have to be here two weeks ago for you to get that, get that uh, joke. But yeah, that's me thinking that I was cool. How about this one? Double polo shirts with a pop collar. That was never me. Nor will it ever be me. How about this one? Jelly shoes. Now, of course... I never had jelly shoes, but I had two sisters, and they had many jelly shoes, and they, they also had a lot of blisters on their feet, but that did not last long either. And last but not least, from Satan himself. <laughs> These things would wake up in the middle of the night and talk to, uh, to each other in a different language that none of us still have no idea what they're saying, and they are plotting to destroy us all. All right, so what does that have to do with tonight's message? I'm glad you asked. 
in due time, Grasshopper, you will find out in due time. So let's get in tonight's message, and I'm going to have to get you uh, caught up. Let me summarize from a few weeks ago. By the way, I hate that I missed uh, last week. I heard it was a success, and I have to say that I'm very proud to be not only part of a church that recognizes Juneteenth, but it also celebrates it as well. Uh, so I hate that I missed it. All right, so let's recap. So two weeks ago, we looked at Peter and John, and they healed a lame man outside the temple gate on their way to pray. And then the religiously inclined of the day, the ones who look like ZZ Top, you see them on the screen, but dressed as Moira Rose. And if you don't get that reference, you're going to have to listen to my sermon from two weeks ago as well. So anyway, ZZ Top arrests the apostles, bring them before in the Imperial Jedi Council. Again, you have to listen to the sermon two weeks ago. So Yoda and the Jedi Council gave them a slap on the wrist, told them to stop talking about Jesus. They spent the night in jail, went back to the others the next day. They prayed, the place shook, they were given boldness to preach, and they continued to preach about Jesus instead, in spite of being warned by the Jedi Council. And that was chapter four. You ready for chapter five? All right. Here we go. As we move on to chapter 5, I'm going to summarize the first 11 verses of chapter 5, and this is why. The first 11 verses of chapter 5 have been a very popular story if you grow up in church to scare the crap out of you. And this is why. Well, you have these two early church followers back then, and they lied to the apostles about how much money they were giving to the church. Now, back then, you have to understand, the early church uh, followers, they were very communal. So they used to share resources, food, possessions, and even money with one another. It wasn't a requirement. It was just something that was just common practice. So here you have this married couple. Their names were Ananias and Sapphira. I don't think we've ever heard those names ever mentioned again, and there, here's the reason why. They lied about how much money they actually gave to the church after they bought land. Okay? Now Peter confronts Ananias and Sapphira about their lying, and at different times, they drop dead. So the moral of the story is, either give all your money to the church, or well, you know what happened to the married couple. That's the moral of the story. That's not the moral of the story. Moral story, lying's bad, the end. All right, then the following verses tell us that many signs and wonders were done at the number of Jesus' followers kept rising, and that kept ticking the Jedi Council off even more. Now we're on to tonight. And since there are a lot of verses, I may uh, summarize some of the verses to get you out of here before 9 o'clock. <laughs> now, I've titled tonight's message, Meetings, Prison Breaks, and Fads, Oh My mainly because the text has to do with all of those things. I don't know why, but I find the story tonight a little bit comical. So let's dive in. All right, we're going to read all of these verses to begin with. All right, so hang with me. Here we go. Starting in verse 17. Provoked mightily by all of this, because I said, you know, the church kept growing, the chief priest and those on his side, mainly the sect of the Sadducees, went into action, arrested the apostles, and put them in the town jail. But during the night, an angel of God opened the jailhouse door and led them out. He said, go to the temple and take your stand. Tell the people everything there is to say about this life. Promptly obedient, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. Meanwhile, the chief priest and his cronies convened the high council, Israel's senate, and sent to the jail to have the prisoners brought in. When the police got there, they couldn't find them anywhere in the jail. They went back and reported, We found the jail locked tight as a drum, and the guards posted at the doors, but when we went inside, we didn't find a soul. The chief of the temple police and the high priest were puzzled. What's going on here anyway? Just then, someone showed up and said, Did you know that the men you put in jail are back in the temple teaching the people? The chief and his police went and got them, but they handled them gently, fearful that the people would riot and turn on them this time. Bringing them back, they took them before the high council. The chief priest said, didn't we give you strict orders not to teach in Jesus' name? And here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are trying your best to blame us for the death of this man. Peter and the apostles answered, it's necessary to obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, the one you killed by hanging him on the cross. God set him on high at his side, Prince and Savior, to give Israel the gift of a changed life and sins forgiven. And we are witnesses to these things. The Holy Spirit, whom God gives to those who obey him, corroborates every detail. 
When they heard that, they were furious and wanted to kill them on the spot. But one of the council members stood up, a Pharisee by the name of Gamaliel. We're going to call him Gamma Ray from now on. A teacher of God's law who was honored by everyone. He ordered the men taken out of the room for a short time, then said, Fellow Israelites, be careful what you do to these men. Not long ago, Thutis made something of a splash, claiming to be somebody, and got about 400 men to join him. He was killed, his followers dispersed, and nothing came of it. A little later, at the time of the census, Judas, the Galilean, appeared and acquired a following. He also fizzled out, and the people followed him were scattered to the four winds. So I'm telling you, hands off these men. Let them alone. If this program or this work is merely human, it will fall apart. But if it is of God, there is nothing you can do about it, and you better not be found fighting against God. That convinced them. They called the apostles back in. After giving them a thorough whipping, they warned them not to speak in Jesus' name and sent them off. The apostles went out of the high council, overjoyed because they had been given the honor of being dishonored on account of the name. Every day they were in the temple, in homes, teaching and preaching Christ Jesus, not letting up for a minute. So we're going to be looking at these passages in chunks tonight since there's so many of them. And when we look at the first few verses, we see that the apostles are really getting under the skin. And I'm going to refer to the high priest and the Sadducees as the Jedi Council and the sad guys from now on. Okay, so here we go. So they were really ticking off the Jedi Council and the sad guys. And so Yoda and the council, what do they keep doing? They keep having meeting after meeting after meeting. Now, as a retired principal and one who is a teacher for many years, and if you are an educator in this building right now, one thing I absolutely hated was meetings. After meeting, after meeting. Before I became a principal, my principal at the time when I was a teacher insisted on having a meeting about literally everything. Meetings that could have been solved with a simple email, text, or even a short story put in our teacher's boxes. But no, my principal insisted on having two-hour meetings after school about absolutely nothing. So when I became a principal, I vowed to never have pointless meetings. I valued my teacher's time, and they appreciated that. But I think that pointless meetings or meetings that produce nothing or meetings that produce bad outcomes, I think they all originated from these meetings that these people were having that we're reading about tonight. That's where they came from. So as the apostles kept preaching and teaching about Jesus, the matter that Jedi Council got and insisted on meeting to try to stop this movement and we see this in verse 17 and 18. It says, Then the high priest rose up. He and all who were with him, who belonged to the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. So they arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail. Rose up, in simpler terms, means they had a meeting. Again. This was more of an impromptu meeting at that time. Another thing I hated as an educator. But that's beside the point. This impromptu meeting probably just involved the guys that were around them at that time. And so that impromptu meeting, they decided, because they were pouting and jealous and nobody was listening to them, their influence was going down the drain, they had to try to stop this, so they decided to arrest these people. So they arrested. And here it says they arrested the apostles. Now in past passages, we've read that Peter and John were arrested. Here it says the apostles, which makes me think that there were more than just those guys that were arrested at that time. So they put them in jail, summoned the entire Jedi Council to come for yet what? Another meeting. So they can ultimately decide what to do with these apostles. Now here's the funny part. So while these apostles are sitting in jail, awaiting their fate, something cool happens. Verses 19 through 21 says, But during the night, an angel of God opened the jailhouse door and led them out. He said, go to the temple, take your stand, tell the people everything there is to say about this life. Promptly obedient, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. So, as the Jedi Council waits for the entire group, their entire group to show up to have their special meeting, the apostles go missing. Well, they didn't really go missing, but they're let go. And they are let out of prison by none other than an angel from God. You know, just a typical day in the life of an early church apostle. We get to heal lame people. We get arrested, and we get let out of jail by 
an angel. So what do they do next? They keep teaching. They didn't get scared of Yoda and his cronies. They didn't pack up and go to another city. They stayed in the exact same square where they were arrested the first time. And they kept teaching about Jesus, just as the angel told them to do. So meanwhile, we cut back to the sad guys, Yoda and the Jedi Council, and find them what they do best, meet. And then we see this in verses 21 through 24. Meanwhile, the chief priest and his cronies convened the high council. Israel sent it and sent them to the jail to have the prisoners brought in. When the police got there, they couldn't find them anywhere in the jail. They went back and reported, we found the jail locked, tight as the drum, and the guards posted at the doors. But when we went inside, we didn't find a soul. The chief of the temple police and the high priest were puzzled. What's going on in here anyway? Now, this was the prison break. Can you imagine being those police officers who were sent to get the prisoners out of jail to be brought back to this powerful Jedi council? Now, you were sent to get them. You're probably thinking you're a bad dude because you're sent to get these prisoners. You're a tough guy. You're going to get these prisoners out of jail. You're going to rough them up while you lead them to have their fate decided. So you, you're with your boys. You go to the jail, you're joking back and forth as you walk up to the jail cell, and all of a sudden, the laughing stops. The jail cell's locked, but nobody's in there. Now, can you imagine the conversation these guys were having at that moment? Who was the last one here last night? Did you forget to lock the door? And how hard is it for us to change our entire identity so we don't have to take ourselves back. Now, they're probably searching frantically for what seemed like days, and then they had to face the reality and go tell the council who was meeting at that very moment. Now, can you imagine how that conversation went? They probably drew straws to see who was going to tell them what had happened. And they probably, well, you see, what had happened was, well, we don't know what had happened was because there's nobody in there. And just as they're delivering the news, something happens. Verses 25 and 26. Just then, someone showed up and said, Did you know that the men you put in jail are back in the temple teaching the people? The chief and his police went and got them, and they handled them gently fearful that the people would riot and turn on them. So, while these guards are breaking the news and hoping they wouldn't be killed for misplacing all of these people, someone runs in and delivers breaking news. Breaking news, the apostles, the escaped inmates, have been spotted. Those religious leaders probably thought that these apostles would be on the run, but they were shocked to find that they were in the same place that they arrested them the first time. And what do they do next? They arrest them again. What a new and novel idea that they came up with in their new and novel idea meetings. Now, Let's go back and see what they say. Bringing them back, they stood them before the high council. The chief priest said, didn't we give you strict orders not to teach in Jesus' name? And here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are trying your best to blame us for the death of this man. So the council was like, listen, didn't we tell you before to stop talking about Jesus and especially stop blaming us for his death? And then Peter clapped back and had this to say. Peter and the apostles answered, it's necessary to obey God rather than man. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, the one you killed by hanging him on a cross. God set him on high at his side, prince and savior to give Israel the gift of a changed life and sins forgiven. And we are witnesses to these things. The Holy Spirit whom God gives to those who obey him corroborates every detail. Peter was like, yeah, we know what you said, but we will not stop talking about our risen savior. You, have, you may have nailed him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead so that we can have forgiveness for our sins, and we're not going to stop talking about it. And so Peter once again reminds those religious leaders that they are witnesses to the gospel, as Jesus said in Acts 1-8, when he says that they will be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Well, Peter's remarks made the Jedi Council stop and think. And they said, you know, you're right. And we're being stupid. Please continue preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus in the temple courts. No. 
They didn't do that. The Bible says that these guys were enraged. These guys were pissed. Can I say that here? I did. All right. They're, they were pissed. All right. So now we get to it's just a phase. We'll get there in a minute. So God, these guys were pissed, wanted to kill all the apostles on the spot, but someone steps in, someone who we rarely hear about, a name that I've only seen once in these passages and have never seen again. His name, like I said, is Gamaliel, but we'll call him Gamma Ray. Verses 33 through 39, he steps in, but one of the council members stood up a Pharisee by the name of Gamma Bray, a teacher of God's law, who was honored by everyone. He ordered the men taken out of the room for a short time, then said, Fellow Israelites, be careful what you do to these men. Not long ago, Thutis made something of a splash, claiming to be somebody, and got about 400 men to join him. He was killed, his followers dispersed, and nothing came of it. A little later, at the same time, at the time of the census, Judas the Galilean appeared and acquired a following. He also fizzled out, and the people following him were scattered to the four winds. So I'm telling you, hands off these men, let them alone. If this program or this work is merely human, it will fall apart. But if it is of God, there's nothing you can do about it, and you better not be found fighting against God. So Gamma Ray basically says, hey, if this thing is not genuine, it will die down. Like the other false teachers who have come through here. However, now, if it's genuine, we may be finding ourselves on the wrong side of this battle. So you might want to be careful. He's saying this is probably yet another fad, another trend. So what will come, it will go just like the rest. So I'm guessing you've heard things, people say, it's just a face. You'll grow out of it. Well, I've heard it said to me many times. And what he just says in this passage reminds me of that. So thank you, Gamma Ray, for starting that phrase even to this day. So in the following verses, we see that his convincing actually did work. Well, sort of. He saved them from being killed. They just got a pretty bad whipping, it says, flogging, the Bible says, before they were sent away. So while Gamma Ray was right, he was also wrong, too. Now, he may have been right from stopping them from being killed, and he warned the leaders of the fact that it could be just a new fad that will hopefully die out like the rest. But he missed the entire picture altogether. You see, he was a teacher of the law. He knew the religious law backward and forward. But he stood with the other leaders. He may have protected the apostles on one side, but he stood with the other leaders on the other and denied the resurrection of Jesus. So who kept warning the apostles to stop preaching Jesus? It was those who were the religiously inclined of the day who were trying to stop them. They continued to preach in spite of being warned by the ones who thought that they knew the religious law and they ultimately know God more than anybody. These are people who spend years, their entire lives, studying the law, perfecting the law, adhering to the law, obeying the law. And here we have the early Jesus followers. They didn't spend their entire lives studying the law. All they knew was to preach Jesus crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. All they knew was that Jesus was alive, and that's all they preached. They didn't have the Baptist faith and message in one hand when they preached that Jesus was alive. They didn't have any church bylaws in their hands to make sure they were staying within the vision and mission of their local church. No, what they had, they had Jesus. That's all they had. And that's all they needed. The Holy Spirit gave them power to speak and preach the name of Jesus. These were the same, the same people who were hiding and denying Jesus while he was being crucified. But now they've been given the resurrection power and, been, and have been given that same power to go preach and teach about that Jesus. Now, I can't tell you how many times I have been told to stop preaching and teaching about Jesus. And not from those who don't believe in Jesus 
But that's coming from other people who say that they also believe in Jesus. I've been called a heretic and a false teacher because I'm standing here teaching you about Jesus. But for some reason, some people just have a hard time hearing that coming from me because of who I love and who I'm married to. Refuge Church has also been deemed a, a heretical church by some people. Because why? Because we are a safe space for all people to come in to explore and restore their faith in Jesus. But the awesome thing about all of this is the fact that we will always preach and teach about Jesus. Refuge Church will always believe, preach, and teach Jesus. And as Peter and John and the other apostles told their critics of the day, we won't stop preaching and teaching Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. So how does this story wrap up? How can we wrap up chapter 5? Well, the leaders once again ordered them to not speak in the name of Jesus. Apparently, they haven't learned yet that the apostles are not going to stop. And how did the apostles react to all of these events? How did they react to being arrested how many times now? And beaten how many times now? Well, they went away pouting, whining, and upset. No, verse 41 says they went away rejoicing. Now, I want you to notice the comparison here. Verse 17 says that the leaders were jealous. Verse 24 says that the leaders were baffled. Verse 26 says that the leaders were afraid. Verse 33 says the leaders were Enraged. Do you see these words? Jealous, baffled, afraid, enraged. However, verse 41 says the apostles were rejoicing. The ones who thought they had all the power were, com were turned completely upside down. Yet the ones being beaten were filled with joy. How could this be? This is not the way things are supposed to work. In case we haven't learned this yet, God doesn't work the way the world thinks things should work sometimes. God can cause a blind person to see. God can cause a dead person to raise from the dead. God can turn a sinner into a saint. He can turn a persecutor into a preacher. He can cause a lame man to leap. And as we see here, he can cause someone who was beaten to rejoice. Because our Savior was beaten almost to death. And he rose from the dead. And that's why we can rejoice. Notice what causes them to rejoice. Verse 42 says, They rejoiced that they were counted worthy to be treated shamefully on, be on behalf of the name. That name by which people were healed. That name by which salvation can come to humanity. That name which they were commanded multiple times to quit mentioning. That name the name of Jesus Christ is the name in which they rejoiced to be part of for the sake of suffering. There must be something about that name. Well, did they stop teaching in that name? Of course not. Verse 42 says, They continued teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. They had true faith and true power which could not be stopped by meetings, arrests, or beatings. The true faith and true power that comes in the name of Jesus is more powerful than anything this world can throw at it. And the reality is, Refuge Church, we have access to the same true faith and the same true power that these apostles had access to 2,000 years ago. We serve the same God, we are saved by the same name, and we are indwelt by the same Holy Spirit. And when we look at what the early church Christ followers went through to build his church. Gamma Ray got it right. It would eventually die out if it was just a fad. Well, 
The gospel of Jesus Christ didn't die out then, and it continues to grow 2,000 years later. Refuge Church, we are a product of these early church followers. And I don't think these early church followers had a clue just how big this following, this truth would spread. But yet, here we are, still teaching, still preaching, and still loving Jesus. And he's still moving. So as we move forward in the coming months, and we make some big decisions here at Refuge, let's pray that we continue to have the boldness like the early apostles to teach Jesus, to love Jesus, and to love others. And if we do that, no religious leaders of today will be able to stop us. As the team comes up, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for these early church followers, these early Christ followers who did nothing but preach Jesus. That's all they knew and that's all they needed. And Father, that's all we need now. And that's all we need to preach. Because you're it. You are the reason why we are still here 2,000 years later. You are not a fad, Jesus. You don't come and go. You are steadfast and you stay. You indwell us. Your Holy Spirit leads us. So, Father, as we continue your movement, your kingdom, as we continue the growth of our church here, your church, Refuge Church, I pray that we have the boldness that these early Christ followers had. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand and continue.